Okay, that's what happens when you push the wrong button. I meant to do the position button. We're going to slide the blue waveform over to the right. We slid it over 220 microseconds. So now notice that our math scale, when we take the sum, in this case we're doing the difference, A minus B, when A is positive, B is negative, so minus a minus becomes a plus, so we get a plus voltage out of this. When A is positive and B is positive, 3 minus 3 ends up 0. And you can carry it on out. So you can see that the math scale, the difference shows that these waveform B is being delayed from waveform A. Channel 2 signal is being delayed from channel 1 signal. So your math scale will look like this if you do A minus B, and if they're both of the same upright polarity. Of course, if you go to A plus B, then things get kind of weird here too, because now it's just doing the sum. When this is plus 3 and this is plus 3, then your mass scale is plus 6, et cetera, going down the line. So I just wanted you to see that. So that's what you would get if the two signals were out of phase, but the same amplitude, same polarity. You'd see this for A plus B mode of math. If we went to A times B, select that. You notice we end up with zeros here. The zero is this line right here. So it makes sense if channel 1 is zero, zero times anything, plus 3 or zero is still zero. So it is truly a math multiplication function the waveform. It's off scale, so I'm going to change the scale down a little bit so we can see it. Two volts is too much. Here you can see the waveform that's presented by A times B, and then there's a little bit of phase shift. If we clear the phase shift, by selecting channel 2, And then horizontal position, clicking that button, phase shift is gone. And now the math function is simply, let me go back to it here. Math function is simply A times B. So hopefully that clears the air for you. And good luck with your math functions. There's one other math function we haven't talked about. That's the FFT math function. That'll be a separate lesson all by itself. So good luck with your math functions. One of the last things we want to do to fill this 10 minute slot is to run a self calibration of the oscilloscope. So user manual page 2-79 describes the procedure, tells you how long it has to run, disconnect everything, and then do it. So let's go ahead and do that. So first you have to disconnect all the input signals. I'll stop and do that. Okay, now that I've disconnected all the input signals, I'm going to go to the utility menu. And we'll scroll down the next page. And I hope it's on this page. Self-calibration right here. It says remove the inputs I did. I didn't we're by alternate sleep or anything, sweep or anything like that, so let's see what happens. So press F3 to do self calibration. It says press the run stop key to start, press the auto key to exit. So we're going to press the run stop key. And it looks like we got some kind of an indicator here that it's busy working. 
and this is we'll just wait till it finishes I won't say anything else until it finishes okay it is now calibrating channel 2 vertical system so we'll go back to wait mode till it finishes okay it's now finished the channel 2 now it's working on the external vertical system calibration now it's calibrating a horizontal system for your time base accuracy. And now it says calibration is finished. Press the run stop key to exit calibration mode. So the run stop key is this guy right here. And we've lost our connection to the computer because they probably did a reboot. So I'm going to have to reconnect tools, connect oscilloscope. That guy. Virtual panel. Zoom it in. And now we're back. So the scope has been calibrated by the internal references and should be good as new. So this concludes this lesson.